Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm working on a mini watercolor painting. This one ended up being, I think it was five by five and the opening for the frame is four by four so it fits perfectly inside of that. But I am starting off with the frame today and I actually really love working this way where I have a frame that I really like and it has interesting design elements and then I like to work off of that. I find inspiration from that and I find ways to incorporate the look of that frame into a suitable piece of artwork. It gives me a lot to think about before I even start working on a piece as far as what the general aesthetic of the whole everything's going to look like once there's a picture in there, once there's the frame. And that actually gives me a lot of motivation, but also inspiration for the piece that I'm going to work on. It gives me motivation to fill that frame, but it also gives me design elements and an overall feeling that I want to put into my piece. So this one, the frame that I'm using is a very warm, dark, rich wood. And I wanted that to kind of mimic in my piece. So ultimately I ended up going with a fox. I wanted it to feel very natural and I was really excited to have a reason to draw a fox. It was actually really helpful that I did a piece that was just dedicated entirely to drawing an animal because that is one of the things that I talk about all the time, so I'm sorry for that, but I, I mentioned that I really do want to draw more animals in my pieces, but somehow I never think about it when I'm actually designing the full pieces that I'm doing. So I think the best way to make that happen is to start doing pieces that are just animals and also to sketch them a lot more. So today is just a piece dedicated to foxes. But I want to talk a little bit about this topic and I don't think it's controversial at all, but I think it might be depending on the person, but there seems to be an opinion and I've I remember this when I was in middle school and high school. There's an opinion that if an artist uses reference, they are somehow less of an artist or that they're cheating and that it's better to be not using any reference, to be the kind of artist that doesn't need any reference. And that is a huge myth. That is kind of a giant lie, actually, because you are not going to get better as an artist if you're not studying the natural, actual world. You're not going to know how to draw a face better if you're not looking at faces and you're not going to know how to draw anything if you're not looking at them and studying them and using reference. And pretty much the more you get better at art, <laughs> the more you want to find reference because that's going to help you improve so much faster. I can attest to that. When you are drawing without using any reference, you will get better because you're practicing and you're drawing a lot, but it's going to be at a much lower rate than if you're using reference. I've had many times where I just didn't even bother using reference. Like pretty much through high school, I didn't bother with reference at all, really. And I can see that I had very slow growth compared to after I went to college and my time after that where I have religiously used reference. I'm always looking at it and I've seen huge improvements in my work. And that is so satisfying and exciting. And it's exciting to study something and to see that coming through in my work. So it's kind of frustrating when I see people still purveying that idea that reference is bad and that it should be avoided. And that if you do use it, it's this dirty secret that you need to hide because it's ultimately holding you back. It's holding you back from being as good of an artist as you can be. And there's just something so exciting about seeing the way that things actually are, learning how to draw that, and then being able to incorporate that into the way that you do want to depict it. Now, I am not trying to shame anyone who doesn't use reference. Let me just put that out there. If you decide that you do not want to use reference or that you just enjoy having a very happy, enjoyable, no stress experience with your art and you just don't even want to worry about reference, do not worry. I do not think any less of you at all. That is something that is very personal as far as what personal goals you want to get out of art and how far you want to push your skill. And it, it really just comes down to what you personally want. But if you really, really want to improve and you want to get better at anything or anything specific, don't be afraid to use reference. That is not cheating. That is one of the staples for when it comes to tools that artists use. The grand masters back in the day, they all used reference. They all had methods of studying the world and being able to transpose that into their work. So it is a, uh, it has gone back in time where people have studied with reference or they've studied the natural world as they've drawn. So that has never been a thing that has been avoided. So I just, I, I want to 
implore you that if you have that idea or you feel intimidated about using reference because you've heard that, you can you can let that go. You can believe that the more you use reference, the better you're going to get and that it is okay. And that is what artists do. Artists use reference. I've heard this analogy before and I, I don't know who said it, unfortunately, but they said that the, a musician, you would never shame them for using sheet music when they're playing. They need that. They need to see what they're going to be working off of and then they perform. And it's very similar for an artist. You you wouldn't shame an artist for using references of looking how the natural world looks and then performing their art based off of that. But again, I just want to stress that this is not about making people feel bad about not using reference, but simply to help people not feel bad about using reference. It is something that really has changed my artistic life. Like I wish so badly that I could go back in time to my high school self or my middle school self even and tell me, you need to use reference. You'll feel better when you draw because it'll be what you want it to be. And you're going to get a lot better. That honestly is one of the big things that if I could go back in time, that's one thing that I would do because I... I'm so grateful for the fact that I use reference now. I've seen a huge improvement in my work since I've started. But it's a little bit bittersweet knowing that I could have started that sooner. But at least I'm grateful that I use reference now, that that's part of my workflow and that I'm aware of it. So basically, I just want this to be something that if you are, haven't really thought about using reference or you have a negative opinion of using reference, maybe start considering it. Think about incorporating it into the way that you work. I mean, the specific example right here is I drew and painted a fox and I almost never draw them. So I have no idea how to sit down and just draw a fox. It would be completely inaccurate. So I looked up a ton of references. I tried to find one that had a particular pose that I wanted to fit in this composition. I also tried to get one that had a facial expression that I wanted to show. And there was just a lot of things that you're just not even aware of can happen until you're looking at reference. There's not, there's things that you don't know detail wise that that is a way and an option. And the more you look at reference, the more you have a visual library up in your head so that when you are sketching without reference, you have all these ideas up there. You know what things can look like. So you can begin working off of that more. But a little bit about how I source what I use when I'm using reference. My favorite go-to place is still Pinterest. I talk about that a lot, but Pinterest has a lot of really nice photos. They're very curated, so it's easy to find things that look good. And I find that I, I struggle a little bit more when it comes to just going into Google Images to find good references or good pictures of people, pretty much anything. It, it's a little bit more of a struggle to get quality images, but I find that Pinterest tends to be a little bit more consistent as far as the stuff that it that people are pinning or things that are pretty, so it makes sense. But I like to go there all the time. I look for portraits, for poses, for photography to give me ideas of overall compositions and overall color palettes, pretty much anything. I look for that in photography, but I also use it to find other artists and to see what other artists are doing, how they're creating. So Pinterest is a really great tool, but I also, when it comes to actually doing like figure poses, I almost entirely take my own now. And the reason for that is because I can get exactly what I want in the pose that I create rather than finding one on the internet that is sort of almost there. Um, I've actually spent hours and hours scouring the internet for a very specific particular pose and I could never find it because it didn't exist. And it really is a no brainer now to me, at least to just take a photo of myself doing the pose that I need. And then I immediately have it. And one thing is that if you have a way to record video, this is a way better way to get a good reference shot actually than just taking individual photos because what I'll do is I will just set up my webcam and I'll record myself and I will do that pose like a bunch fluidly and several different options. And usually it's not the first one, it's several iterations into it because that becomes a lot more fluid and natural. And I can get something that's a little bit more in between emotion or it's just a very good way to see different options very quickly. So, yeah, just a recap, I go to Pinterest, sometimes Google if it's something that's more more specific, like I need reference of a very specific object, then I will go to, um, then I'll go to Google. But other than that, it's Pinterest and it's self photography. I take pictures of myself posing. 
And that is it for today's tiny little piece. And like I mentioned, I do have this available. So if you like the original, it's listed down below and in the description. But overall, I hope that the words that I said today was more inspirational and helpful rather than really anything else. I just want it to be a positive thing because using reference is a very positive experience for me. At least I love using reference. I love feeling concrete improvement from that. But overall, I did actually love painting this little fox. I really liked getting the fur texture in there and playing with that a lot. So yes, there will definitely be more animals and probably more foxes because they are one of my favorites. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I do post every Wednesdays and Saturdays, so I'll see you guys at my next one.